All right, so I'm going to go over um, the webcast project man management portion. So everything starts with the npm underscore virtual event request issue template. So there's two ways this issue template gets created. One is you create it when you initiate the virtual event for an integrated campaign or really the webcast for an integrated campaign um, or say a requester submits it. So this virtual event request issue template contains all the high level details of the virtual events. Um, this is really to make sure that you have all the pertinent information before you start the planning process. So usually um, it has the requester, uh, the event type, most likely you will see this one checked, which is the end user webcast GitLab hosted. This is really lead gen webcast that we host ourselves. Um, the rest, I think for the most part, I still support them. And then the business goal, um, and as well as the audience. Uh, this is really to help provide some guidance on how to build the list for the audience, whether it's prospects or customers, um, things like that, so you know where to pull the list from. Um, there's also the topic that should be filled out, the event date, which should also be um, basically the issue, be filled out as the issue due date by the requester, and the speaker, which has to be filled out before you can move the status from planning to WIP, uh, whether it has a paid ads budget, yes or no, and if so, how much it will be. Um, the bottom section here, which is for account-specific webcasts only, um, these are really for, up, for up, upsell webcasts at the moment, so you can ignore this for now. As I most likely will still be handling most of these. So currently, the issue template is auto-assigned to me because I was handling all virtual events requests, but in the next MPM Connect, let's chat if this makes make sense or if we should auto assign to all of us. Um, so the default st stat status when, you, when someone submits this uh, issue template will be status plan. Um, so what you want to do is you want, they're supposed to add mention you to confirm if the requested date is feasible. So you want to make sure that again, all the information that you need is filled out and then check if there is an overlap with another virtual event. So there's a link here as well in the issue template um, to the virtual events calendar. So you want to see, say, okay, is there any overlap? Copy paste. And then if say that was like for December 5th or something, and you see that, oh, there's not an overlap in the requested time, you're not supposed to go forward with it because we only have one webcast license. So we want to make sure we don't overlap each other in scheduling uh, webcasts. But if say it's December 4th and there's nothing, you can go ahead and confirm um, through the comments back to the, back to the requester uh, to confirm the date and then go ahead and move the labels to, from status plan to status whip and add the um, webcast label as well as the fiscal year label. This will make sure it uh, appears on the webcast board um, in GitLab. So next, once you've got confirmation and you move the status from plan to web, ready to proceed with creating the GAN chart, the EPIC, and the MPM um, subsequent NPM support issues. So I'm going to go over the GAN chart really quickly. Um, the GAN chart here, there's a GAN chart for webcast planning under the GAN framework NPM only template. Um, so for webcasts that are tied to an integrated campaign, you wouldn't have to create a new copy. Rather, you would just clone or basically fill out the GAN webcast planning tab within your integrated campaign GAN, GAN, GAN document. Um, or if you have more than one webcast, then you would basically clone this GAN webcast planning to, for each subsequent webcast. 
So within the Gantt chart, you have um, so I'm gonna do when the web live date is when the webcast is scheduled to be live, the MPM that will be doing the uh, project plan and project management basically for the webcast, the PMM and presenter or presenter that will be presenting, uh, Q&A support optional, um, and the DMP uh, usually that will be supporting this from a pit ads perspective and email reviews. Um, so really quickly, the first column is the action item column. Um, so here it lists all the action items. Some of these are optional. So for example, like hosting a call with internal team, I've marked it as optional, as well as uh, design assets delivered. Sometimes that's pretty optional as well, because sometimes with integrated campaign, we've pre-created or pre-requested the designs ahead of time. So there's no additional um, design work that needs to be delivered specific for the webcast. Again, it's a case by case basis. Um, and then blog post promotion, which is again an optional thing that you want to check with a requester because blog posts is not a required step within the webcast project planning at the moment, um, but it's nice if um, you know there is that component and content team is willing to support it. So it's more of a nice to have versus a must have. And then in the status column, it will tell you the status of that particular action item or task on the left. Um, and then in the template or additional documentation column uh, should link to mostly the issue templates that's related to the action items. But for some of these, there are no issue templates, like for example, set up tracking in Salesforce Market on Zoom. So I'll link the training video on how to do that um, here. So basically it's, it's just linking to issue templates or any additional useful documentation that's related to the action item on the left column. And one thing to note, for example, there is um, usually like, there are some tasks that share the same issue template. So for example, email invite copy written and email invite scheduled share the MPM-03 invitation reminder template. So what I do is I usually just link it to the, in the, in the template itself, I only link it to the initial task that was due. So the email copy written. Um, and then in the email invite schedule, I just noted in the notes that this is a to do within the, the MPM03 invitations reminder issue template. And then you, there's a column for you to link the issues once you've created, created them. Uh, the DRI that will be doing the task itself. Um, and then if you fill out the live date, so say, which is the webcast target go live date, say it's 12th of December, 12, I mean, sorry, 12th of December, 2019, then it should auto populate the day of the week uh, of this, when the specific task is due, the due date of when the task is due, and all this is auto calculated based on the SLA column here, um, the column H. Uh, there's also a column for column J, which is column for dependencies. So it's to outline that, for example, in order to host a kickoff call, you need to make sure the presenter has been secured. Um, so basically, things that will prevent this section item from, from being created um, or things that needs to be completed prior to being able to work on these specific action items will be documented here in the dependencies column. And then finally, the notes column which should outline the, just give you more color about the particular action item or task um, as mentioned earlier. So once the Gantt um, has been filled out, you're now ready to create the Epic as well as the MPM support issues. So when you create the Epic um, for the webcast, you want to make sure that it follows the same, uh, you know, the naming convention of the webcast title, dash the date in months, three letter, um, I mean, three letter months, day, year. And then 
you want to copy and paste the code that is on the virtual events handbook uh, on what to put in the epic description. Um, it should contain a link to the main issue, a link to the Gantt chart, a link to the um, landing page and email template. You will also link the Marketo's campaign and Marketo's program and Salesforce campaign here once you create them. And it also contains a section which is a checklist of all the MPM support issues that you need to create. So after all this is filled out and you've created the MPM support issues and linked back to this epic, the final epic should look like this. So it has the description filled out and this MPM support issues all linked here as well as other relevant issues um, tied to the MP and marketing ops. So this is all for the project planning portion of webcast. Now I'm going to go over the technical setup portion.